In the previous two units, what we covered was first a mathematical account of how to model the arrival time of taxi cabs in New York. And then I tried to generalize and give you a sense of how maximum entropy methods are used in the real world, in particular how they're used or might be used to describe the open source software ecosystem. Okay. I did this by analogy to a set of foundational work that people have done in the study of ecosystems. Okay. And I showed you how, for example, the maximum entropy model might be in tension okay, with a simpler mechanistic model. And currently, we don't have the ability to distinguish between the two functional forms. Max M predicts one functional form, this mechanistic probability accrual, okay, probabilistic multiplicative accrual of language adherence has a slightly different functional form. And they look too similar for us to decide right now. Okay. In this next part of the talk, or in the next part of this unit, what I'm going to try to do is show you another kind of argument that gets made about social systems and biological systems, in this case, of course, the social system. And I'm going to show you how those arguments get made in a maximum entropy form and the kinds of insight that you might be able to derive. So this is a story that focuses on a really interesting part of Americana. It's the Sears Roebuck catalog. So the Sears Roebuck company invented, at least in the States, this idea of selling large amounts of consumer goods, not directly through a store, but through a printed catalog that was then distributed all across the country. Okay? So if you were you know, a farmer in the fall of 1909, you weren't able necessarily to get to Chicago to go buy the things that you needed to buy to get by. Needles and thread and clothespins and buggy whips right? and you know, Remington shavers. So what you did instead was you consulted the Sears, Roebuck & Co. catalog and you were able to order by mail all the things that you needed. And this revolutionized, of course, consumer buying. This was sort of the Amazon Prime or the Amazon.com right, of the early 20th century. And in fact, the Sears Roebuck catalog ran you know, before all the way from the 1800s to the late 1800s all the way through to the 20th century, to the end of the 20th century. Okay. It may still even exist in some form today, of course, buying things through mail and printed catalogs has somewhat declined in popularity since we all use the internet. So I'm going to talk in particular about a paper that was written in 1981 by Elliot Montrell called On the Entropy Function in Socio-Technical Systems. And it's interesting in part because it's one of the first times that somebody tried to build an argument about social systems, or about living systems, by using maximum entropy arguments. And so here's what Montreal did. Okay? Montreal looked at the prices of goods in the Sears Roebuck catalog. Okay? And in fact, actually, he took data from another source. And what he plots here is year by year. So this is 1916, this is 1924, this is 1974. Okay? And what he does is he plots the distribution of prices, the probability okay, that a good in the Sears catalog has some cost C. And he plots this on a log scale, right? So this is log price, okay? And in fact, he uses log base two. And this ranges from negative six, that's one over 64, to positive six, 64 dollars, okay? In the 1916 case. And he plots the distribution, okay, of goods here. So for example, there's a 16% chance that if you pull an item out of the Sears catalog in 1916 at random that it costs roughly log base two dollars equal to zero. Or in other words, it costs about a dollar. Okay. So 16% of all the goods in the catalog cost a dollar. And you can see that on the extremes, this distribution dies out, right? So there are very few goods who cost more than $60, and there's very few goods around here that cost on the order of cents. So the first thing he notes, right, is that this distribution looks roughly Gaussian. Okay, or normal. And if you paid attention in the previous unit, you noticed that this here is the log price. So in fact, the distribution of prices in the Sears catalog is log normal. Okay. In other words, if you take the logarithm of the price and show the distribution, you get a Gaussian. So let's dig a little bit into the log normal distribution. Okay. It looks like P of x is proportional to e to the negative x minus mu squared over 2 sigma squared. Okay. I called mu x bar there, but mu is the mean of the distribution. 
we call it the mean. And sigma is something we call the variance. Okay. Let's expand this a little bit more. Okay. And we'll write this as e to the negative x squared over 2 sigma squared plus 2x mu over 2 sigma squared. That's the cross term. And minus mu squared over 2 sigma squared. Okay, all I've done is expand this x minus mu squared over 2 sigma squared term. Okay. So I'm going to rewrite this as e to the negative lambda 1 x squared plus lambda 2 x plus lambda 3. And when I write it in this form, you realize that the log normal distribution is just the maximum entropy distribution if we constrain two things. One, we constrain x squared. And the other, we constrain x. And of course, constraining these two things is equivalent to constraining the variance, which is x minus the expectation value of x squared, and the mean. Constraining these two is equivalent to constraining these two, because of course you can just expand this here. So fixing this and this to some set of values is the same as fixing this to a value and this to a value. So the log normal distribution is secretly and has secretly been all along another max n distribution. Okay? Once you write it like this okay, and realize that all these sort of constants here and here, okay, all these constants are really just Lagrange multipliers that people figured out the right answers for, okay, you realize that the log normal distribution constrains these two quantities.